Welcome to the 56th taping of the infamous Todd Show. Talk about a mouthful. Today's show is called Don't Like Me Because I'm Pretty. I laughed when I first thought of uh, the title for the show um, because there's very few things inside my life that people would consider pretty. When I was a child, I lived near a magical forest in a small Michigan village. I played near the water uh, that I convinced myself was where Tom Sawyer played. When I was a child, my neighbor's children were cowboys and soldiers and aliens, and my dog, Augie, was easily my best friend. When I was a child, my childhood town seemed vast. My grandparents ruled the world. My teachers knew everything. And the only person scarier than a pr pissed off principal was a pissed off parent. <laughs> It was a childhood of toad villages crafted in the sand, memories of my October Halloween birthday parties, and the cusp of autumn recollections of homecomings at the high school where the big kids played, and the excitement of sitting around the RCA waiting for the cancellation of school on a blustery snow day. I lived as a child in a child's world of unlimited imagination. As a child, I could close my eyes to change the world. I could play in my grandparents' pool in Rochester, Michigan, and instantly I was Aquaman. Dashing through our backyard, I could violate my mother's laundry, hanging on the lines, blowing in the gentle summer breeze, the summer breeze, and I could wrap one of the cotton bath towels around my neck to transform into any superhero. God forbid my friends and I had a sleepover, on nights when Godzilla or Bruce, Bruce Lee was on the television set, for in that incredible night I could have swore I knew Kung Fu as well as the Master. For I was a child living in a children's world. When I was a child, I believed in everything anyone told me. I knew if I believed in Santa, presents would appear. I understood that if I lost my teeth, they became quarters under my pillow. Um, that a rabbit brought a basket of candy, and no matter how hard I got hurt, my mother could make it right again. For I was a child living in a child's world. For the lessons I learned as a child, I took into adulthood. Now don't get me wrong, many of them I learned to assimilate into my own beliefs. I still believe in Santa. <laughs> I still believe in Santa. I'm still afraid of the dark. And to this day, my childhood dog, uh, dog Augie, it was still my best friend my entire life. One of the lessons I took from my childhood has more to do with the adults than with children. I came from a large, strict family. Throwing a fit got you no, nothing that you wanted. Well, unless your goal was to get smacked and sent to bed. No, no, my preconceptions of adults behaving badly <laughs> around other adults is what I carried into puberty. A adults taught me to be the person that, sc that screams and yells the most, often wins. The bully is a bully because people allow him to be a bully. For what did I know? For I was a child living in a children's world. I grew up to be a restaurateur. In a restaurant, just as in many careers, you realize that the bully still survives. You know, the one that throws the fit the loudest seems to always catch the attention of the managers and the owners and seems to get all the stuff. But the only difference now is that they drive SUVs and they eat at the same restaurants as all of us. The children that hid in the shadows from the bully became the adults now hiding apathetically on social media unable to function in the real world. These passive people sit quietly at home, pressing the like button on every social cause known to man. Most of society is now replacing actual action by believing that you can change the world while surfing social media. The people, the people making the change in the world need to actually go into the world to change it. We're not sitting at home pressing the like button on Facebook, or waiting to go home to post a negative comment online that we're afraid to share in person. Demanding change doesn't make you a bully. Violence and intimidation makes you bullies. People often confuse a bully 
with a person headstrong. Don't don't let people shame you for be, for being committed to a cause. When you see people opposing your viewpoint, don't confuse them with being a bully. Today's culture and mindset has everyone fighting, and our country is being torn apart by partis uh, by partisan divide, perpetuating this claim. It's incredible reading the script that I'm using today because it's based on a speech that I wrote in 2011 for the second Harvey Milk Festival. It's words not only relevant today to today's culture, but if anything, they should become a battle cry. Now we assume if we don't agree with me, it's because you're a bully, you're ignorant, obviously you must be an enemy. I don't believe you are any of these three, and I promise. None of the people that think I'm one of those three got this far in today's show. I knew I wanted to make a mark on the world about 30 years ago. For better or worse, <laughs> the jury is still out. I knew in my heart that I could never be too old, too sick, or <laughs> too past my prime, or too insignificant to make a difference in the world around me. Words can only inspire action, but words alone will never change anything. Actions change the world. Today, I hope to inspire you to act upon your beliefs, the foundation of your character, your, your moral value, the person you wish to be. Inspiration woke me up in 2010, but inspiration will not get the job done. Inspiration can only take you so far. Inspiration is the spark plug for the engine that represents the pillars of your life your beliefs, your moral character. It represents the person that you are. Far past the moments when inspiration runs out. Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Harvey Milk, Kennedy, and arguably God himself understood that inspiration is nothing if it is not followed by action. They knew the words they spoke needed, to be, needed people to listen but then to go out into the communities and repeat their words, to share the ideas of the cause, to believe so much in their beliefs that they committed their time, talent, and treasures to believe that they could make a difference. Commitment takes physical engagement. To create lasting change, it demands organized physical action. Not a single successful organizer said, hey there, just sit back and just agree with me while I do all the work for you. You need to understand, inspiration is not always easy. Inspiration takes effort, work, and determination. Two people can hear the same words and each hear different messages. Believe me, words are my craft. Twelve people can hear the same words and each hear different messages. At least nine of the twelve people listening to me today will barely hear me. Five of those nine will tolerate me speaking. In fact, statistics show for this show and for this for my 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 series that nine out of the twelve people have already stopped listening to today's podcast. <laughs> That's not good, right? In the long run, a speaker speaks hoping to reach only one out of twelve people. I hope I speak hoping to reach one out of twenty, knowing that twenty out of the hundred will even listen to this show at all. I have over 10,000 listeners. This means I will be ecstatic to personally reach 50 of them. If I can inspire one of them to consider change, then the ripple effect, I, the ripple I created has now changed a life. Most people that insist on inspiration to create action are often victims of procrastination. The benefit we enjoy today are a direct result of someone that stood up and fought for these rights. Assembly for Equality. The right to vote without being a landowner. To speak aloud. To challenge the status quo. To speak against our government no matter which party controls it. All of these rights and, un and unbelievably paid not only with sweat, but also with human lives. I'm not, I'm not asking you to put your life on the line today. I'm asking you to stand up for what you already know is right. Even if the cause is, a, is everything I hate in the world, it has to go beyond the like button, right? You do not live in a virtual world. 
Now, one child is saved by bullying because you hit that like button or shared some emotional meme or a message in an email to your friends or on social media. Not one dog is less abused because you shared a photo of an abused dog on social media. Not one person will find a reprieve from an abusive spouse because you hit that like button. Not a single child will be saved from sex trafficking because you shared a clever meme. No matter your best intentions are, my friends, not a single soul will be cured of cancer because you posted on social media that you hated cancer and cancer sucked. We do not live in a virtual world. Tonight, a child will be beaten to death. Tonight, people will suffer. In addition, tonight, the best of all of you will be lost. If you continue to believe causes are fought without labor, without money, without sweat, without sacrifice, and most importantly, without you realizing that the dividing line between failure and success is you. It's always been you. Living in a virtual world on the web is like living with Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn in the mind of a child. It vanishes quickly into reality. The virtual world can only be a tool. Twitter and Facebook did more in the Middle East than billions of dollars spent by the superpowers. It has built and destroyed businesses, people, politicians. It has given a voice to people unwilling to leave their virtual world and those truly wanting change. Are you amazed by the changes in the world from the internet? Notice the changes are not coming from the information shared. Dictators did not fall because Twitter or Facebook said so. Change happened because the shared words created physical action. Change happens when people joined in the streets to demand a new direction for their own lives. True heroes of our cause, of all of our causes, they surround me, they surround you, and I promise you, their work never ends. These people fight our battles. They run our charities and struggle each day to catch your attention long enough to stir action. Their failure rate to get most of you off the couch and active in a cause is incredible. Most estimates place, place it over 99%. Go, go, go on any social media posts stating a person hates cancer, for an example. Out of the 100 posts, you will be lucky to find one person actually volunteering on a weekly basis to fight against cancer at a cancer charity organization, support group, family, uh, a family grief agency, or even a cancer medical facility. The people that make the differences stood up and physically committed their time, talent, and treasures to an organization. They are the heroes that make a difference in our lives. And they are telling you that the battle will be lost if you continue to be passive. These activists need to help, need people to help them when they're tired, worn out, and emotionally drained. I can promise you, if you don't help them, then the cause they are fighting wins. If you fight for social justice, the people fighting against you, they have more money. They have time on their hands and they, pos and they possess preconceived laws already on their side. Let me tell you something today. I've told you before, I'll, and I will spend the rest of my life repeating it. We have a secret weapon. It's you. It is you if you start helping them today. Because the opposing forces did not expect you to stand up and help. If you, if it is to volunteer for causes such as heart disease or AIDS or even childhood diseases, you become another sign of optimism for those suffering. Your actions will inspire people around you to become more active. Physically, becoming physically part of a cause is a commitment to people far beyond your own circle of family and friends. You become the ripple upon the pond. It defines part of your character. Your life, your life has to become greater than a like button. Treat it that way. The people around you need to start becoming a bigger part of your life than a like or love button. 
Stop sharing every meme and photo you can find on social media, text messages, and through emails. Every minute that you waste doing that is a minute you could have donated towards making an actual change in the world and actually doing something. Now, before you agree to any social statement from now on, on either social media or sitting in a restaurant with a friend, I want you to stop and physically, verbally say out loud, what am I going to do physically about it right now? Look at the last event you physically joined to show your support on an acre of land. At one point, at one time, that event was only a flicker of an idea in someone's mind at that charity. The charity holding the event was once an idea of an idea flickering in the mind of a person, of a person's mind. Perhaps that event consumed one acre of land. Perhaps it took almost 20 businesses and 50 people to work hundreds of hours to transform that one acre of land just for that one day. Just for that one, one single day. It took the founder, a board of directors, performers, volunteers, businesses, and each of you attending to make that event succeed. It took all of you just to physically make that simple change of one acre of land for only one day. I can guarantee you, it will take a lot more people to change the 36,794,240,000 acres that make up this world. It will take millions of people working millions of hours to change the 2.3 billion acres that the United States calls home. Think of the last charity event or cause you joined. The cause needed to change that acre of land for more than just one day. Because you know why? They needed to change you. Late that night, they took down the tables. They stacked them up carefully in manageable rows. The chairs towered possibly a dozen high. And the rope by rope, the tents fell. And at the end, all that remained on that lot was trash missed by the best well-intent crew. The field once again grew wild weeds as the summer quickly consumed the day and the best of the speeches spoke that afternoon fell away by autumn. You cannot measure events by clever words spoken, spoken by people like me, but by the actions you take from that day forward, that you physically take that day forward. Please take action in your own life to help causes important to you to create a better world. A world we cannot successfully accomplish without your help. Two weeks ago, in my Why Me Harvey Milk episode, I stated that you could not fight for equality if you look in the mirror and see less of, of a person looking back at you. Today, I offer you a chance to add value to your life by fighting for causes, even if they are against mine. I promise you, you will see a better reflection of yourself from a mirror that values pride and self-determination. One by one, each of you will have to leave this podcast today and determine your value in the world. What you leave behind defines the person you want to be in life. Do you seek to be passive? To let other people dictate your life? To let them be the narrator of your time on earth? I wrote these words in 2011 because I believed in people because I believed in you. I still believe in you. Physical commitment to causes become one of the four pillars to which you will build your reputation. My stories of my life might entertain people, perhaps gross out many more. Lots will create uh, created laughter, perhaps a few with tears, but I need to believe that part of the conversation after I'm not around my friends and family include comments of me helping people struggling in life. The people that want you to be less of a person are counting on you to select a passive path by having you stay online and not physically commit to a, a cause. The people on opposing views of your beliefs are counting on you to select a passive path by having you stay online and not physically commit to your cause. They have bet everything they have in the belief that when all is said and done, you will do absolutely nothing. Venting slowly online makes them the winners. For every minute you waste screaming and ranting on social media, 
It's time wasted from actually creating real life change. Leave your home and make your watermark on life. Make it loudly. And if nobody listens, yell. If ignored, ignored scream. And if pushed to the side, shout. You, ha you must be loud, my friends. For inside your spirit, you must carry the burden of hundreds of people that treat your life as a like button. Sometimes you must be obnoxious, irritating, over the top. I know this. I know this to be true, as I'm guilty of all of them. Few people in my friend and family's lives are more rambunctious than me. I pledge my best to you to be stronger, often louder, and most of the time very aggressive. More involved. I want to be more involved than the people that want to bring us harm. My life is stronger than a like button. My beliefs are not just a watermark to only be found when raised to the light, but stamped across my forehead in black bold letters, helping people fight for what I know is right. I still believe I was right as a child, living in a child's world of an unlimited imagination that everything can be fixed. I may be too old and too fat to play Twister. My system is way, is too shaky for pickup sticks. My patience no longer has interest in a long game of Monopoly, but I still believe I can change the world. If for a moment we put down the games, turn off the computers, stand side by side, shoulder to shoulder, hand to hand, and say, I will make a difference to succeed. And I will no longer sit back and let other people determine my life. Next, next Sunday morning, I'll talk about stealing from children with passive regret and no intent to ever pay them back. Until then, thank you for joining me on the Infamous Todd Show. Now, go make it a great day. Thank you. Bye.